we're still reading the same story so it doesn't finish for a while James and the giant peach I'll give you a little recap so there was a little boy and his parents got eaten by some animals at the zoo or something crazy and then he went to live with some horrible ants and then he met a man with like these magic beans and instead of doing what the man told him to do with them he tripped and he spilt them on this peach tree and this peach tree grew fast and the ants were making all this crazy money charging people and then and then this huge huge peach was on the ground and he climbed over the fence and he moved closer to the peach and then he noticed that there was a hole inside the peach. So that's where we're starting today. It was quite a large hole. The sort of thing an animal about the size of a fox might have made. James knelt down in front of it and poked his head and shoulders in. He crawled into the peach. He kept on crawling. This isn't just a hole, he thought. It's a tunnel. The tunnel was damp and murky. Can you see the book I'm reading? Here, I'll, I'll move over a little bit. Okay. The tunnel was damp and murky, and all around him there was the curious, bittersweet of fresh peach. The floor was soggy under his knees. The walls were wet and sticky, and peach juice was dripping from the ceiling. James opened his mouth and caught some of it on his tongue. It tasted delicious. He was crawling uphill now as though the tunnel were leading straight toward the very center of the gigantic fruit. Every few seconds he paused and took a bite out of the wall. <laughs> the peach was juicy and sweet and marvelously refreshing. He crawled on for several more yards and then suddenly, bang, the top of his head bumped into something extremely hard. It was blocking his way, so he glanced up to see in front of him a solid wall. He touched it with his fingers. It felt like wood, except it was real jagged and full of deep grooves. Maybe he's feeling the peach pit. Good heavens, he said. I know what this is. I've come to the stone in the middle of the peach. Then he noticed that there was a small door cut into the face of the peach stone. He gave a push, it swung open, he crawled through it, and before he had time to glance up and see where he was, he heard a voice saying, look who's here. We've been waiting for you. So this is him pushing through into the peach. James stopped and stared at the speakers, his face white with horror. He started to stand up, but his knees were shaking so much he had to sit down again on the floor. He glanced behind him, thinking he could bolt back into the tunnel the way he had come, but the doorway had disappeared. There was now only a solid brown wall behind him. James's large, frightened eyes traveled slowly around the room. This is the picture of all the people in the room. The creatures were sitting on chairs or reclining on a sofa. They were all watching him intently. Were they insects? An insect is usually something small. A grasshopper, for example, is an insect. So what would you call it if you saw a grasshopper as large as a dog sitting on a sofa? There was an old green grasshopper, as large as a dog, sitting on a sofa directly across the room from James. Next to the grasshopper 
there was an enormous spider. Next to the spider was a giant ladybug. Each of these three was squatting upon a magnificent chair. Oh, so the grasshopper was on a chair, not a, not a sofa. There's the three of them again. On the floor, over in the far corner, was something thick and white that looked as though... Oh, wait, I skipped a, I skipped a line. On a sofa nearby, reclining comfortably, was a centipede and an earthworm. Then, on the floor over in the far corner, there was something thick and white that looked as though it might be a silkworm. But it was sleeping soundly and nobody was paying any attention to it. Every one of these creatures was at least as big as James himself. And in the strange greenish light that shone down from somewhere in the ceiling, they were absolutely terrifying to behold. I'm hungry, said the spider, staring hard at James. I'm famished, the old green grasshopper said. So am I, the ladybug said. The centipede sat up a little straighter on the sofa. Everybody's hungry. We need food. Four pairs of round, black, glassy eyes were all fixed on James. The centipede made a wriggling movement with his body as though he were about to glide off the sofa, but he didn't. There was a long pause and then a long silence. The spider, who happened to be a female spider, opened her mouth and ran a long black tongue delicately over her lips. Aren't you hungry? She asked suddenly, addressing herself to James. Poor James was backed up against the far wall, shivering with fright and much too terrified to answer. What's the matter with you? The grasshopper asked. You look sick. He looks as though he's going to faint any second, said the centipede. Oh my goodness, poor thing, cried the ladybug. I do believe he thinks it's him we are wanting to eat. There was a roar of laughter, ha, 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 from everybody. Oh dear, what an awful thought. You mustn't be frightened, the ladybug said kindly. We wouldn't dream of hurting you. You are one of us now. Didn't you know that? You are one of the crew. We are all in the same boat. We've been waiting for you all day long, said the green grasshopper. We thought you were never going to turn up. We're so glad you're here. So cheer up, my boy, the centipede said, and meanwhile, I wish you'd come over here and give me a hand with these boots. It takes me hours to get them off by myself. So James decided that this was most certainly not a time to be disagreeable. He crossed the room to where the centipede was sitting and knelt down beside him. Thank you so much, the centipede said. You are very kind. You have a lot of boots, said James. I have a lot of legs, a centipede answered proudly, and a lot of feet, 100 to be exact. 100 feet? I hope they don't smell. There he goes again, the earthworm cried, speaking for the first time. He simply cannot stop telling lies about his legs. He doesn't have anything like a 100 of them. He's only got 42. The trouble is that most people don't bother to count them. They just take his word. Anyway, there is nothing marvelous, you know, centipede, about having a lot of legs. Poor fellow, the centipede said, whispering in James's ear. He's blind. He can't see how splendid I look. In my opinion, the earthworm said, the really marvelous thing is to have no legs at all and be able to walk just the same. You call that walking, cried the centipede. You're a slitherer, and that's all you are. You just slither along. I glide, said the earthworm primly. 
You are a slimy beast, answered the centipede. I am not a slimy beast, the earthworm said. I am useful and a much-loved creature. Ask any gardener. I am a pest, said the centipede, grinning broadly and looking around the room for approval. He is so proud of that, the ladybug said, smiling at James. Though for the life of me, I cannot understand why. I am the only pest in this room, cried the centipede, still grinning. Unless you count old green grasshopper over there. But he is long past it now. He, he is too old to be a pest anymore. The old green grasshopper turned his huge black eyes upon the centipede and gave him a withering look. Young fellow, he said, speaking in a deep slow, scornful voice. I have never been a pest in my whole life. I am a musician. Hear, hear, said the ladybug. James, the centipede said. Your name's is James, isn't it? Yes. Well, James, have you ever in your life seen such a marvelous, colossal centipede as me? I certainly haven't, said James. How on earth did you get to be like that? Very peculiar, the centipede said. Very, very peculiar indeed. Let me tell you what happened. I was messing about in the garden under the old peach tree and suddenly a funny little green thing came wriggling past my nose. Bright green it was, and extraordinarily beautiful, and it looked like some kind of tiny stone or crystal. Well, that's, the, that's what the old man gave him, a bag of crystals. It happened to me too, said the ladybug, and me, Miss Spider. Suddenly there were little green things everywhere. The soil was full of them. I actually swallowed one, the earthworm said. So did I, said the ladybug. I swallowed three, the centipede cried. But who's telling this story anyway? Don't interrupt. It's too late now to tell stories, the old green grasshopper announced. It's time to go to sleep. I refuse to sleep in my boots, the centipede cried. How many more are there to come off, James? I think I've done about 20 so far. Then that leaves 80 to go, the centipede said said. Twenty-two, not eighty, shrieked the earthworm. He's exaggerating again. The centipede roared with laughter. Stop pulling the earthworm's leg. Ha, ha, ha. This sent the centipede into hysterics. Pulling his leg. Ha, 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 ha. Which leg am I pulling? James decided that he rather liked the centipede. He was obviously a rascal, but what a change it was to hear somebody laughing once in a while. He had never heard Aunt Sponge or Aunt Spiker laughing aloud in all the time he had been with them. We really must get some sleep, the old green grasshopper said. We've got a tough day ahead. So would you be kind enough, Miss Spider, to make the beds? I bet she makes little spider web hammocks for everybody to sleep on. I hope you have a good night's sleep, and I'll see you soon.